Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Between Two Brokers. Um, okay, Aaron, so let's recap the last weekend for okay. you, because you closed on your mountain house mm-hmm. on Wednesday, right? Yes. And I closed on Friday, so let's talk about all the things. And normally, you do your girls' Labor Day weekend every weekend. This is the <clears> first time, No. Oh, no, we did it. We moved it to the mountains. Oh, shit. Okay. That's why I want to record this podcast laying down so I can nap while you're talking. (laughs) I'm so tired. We'll talk about your um, LDW extravaganza that you have every year because that's fun. Yeah. So it's the same five girls that come down every year. This was actually the 10th year um, that we've been doing it. And like two come from New York, one from Wilmington, one from Winston, um, three from New York. Sorry. Um, and usually they get a here on Friday. We have lots of wine. We go out to dinner. We stay up, um, singing show tunes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes lots of Adele, uh, the first uh, night. Wow. And then we, yeah. So the that routine, like you. <laughs> oh, um, I'm an audience of one. <laughs> they are the performers. Okay. Um, my nickname with them is Earl. Yeah. Um, just because that's kind of the vibe I give off. <laughs> uh, also, a new one came this year. It's Icy Spice. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Which surprises no one. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so usually, you know, the Charleston routine is dinner Friday night at Post House, Saturday brunch at Obstinate Daughter. Then we go to Publix for like two hours for boat snacks um, we um, go on a boat ride with our uh, with K Rock, um, who's the drummer in my wedding band. But he um, owns no, he doesn't. He manages the Toller's Cove Marina, um, Kevin Austin, and he is amazing. And he I, like Spence and all of his buddies are like, "Come on, man! Like, tell me what happens on the boat." And he's always like, "What stays on the you know what happens on the boat stays on the boat." Like he never spills our secrets because it is a wild time. Um, it's like a three to four hour boat ride. Uh, then we come home, have dinner at my house. Sunday is Eat, Shop, Eat, where we go to brunch. We go down King Street. We shop. We stop for wine. Then we have dinner at the Oyster Bar at The Ordinary. Um, there are usually tears. There are serotonin spikes and dips all over the place. <laughs> we are never in line with spiking and dipping at the same time. It's, um, it is an amazing weekend. And come Monday morning, we are all extremely exhausted. Usually I don't have to drive home because I host at my house, but this year because we moved it to the mountains, I also had to drive home yesterday in that crazy weather. Mm -hmm. Um, It it stormed the whole time, like crazy lightning. It's just um, crazy, but so lovely. And the mountains obviously offer a little bit of a different environment. So we went on hikes. Um, It poured rain the last two days we were there. So it was a little um, tamer than the classic version in Charleston. <laughs> um, but it was, it was so much fun. And, um, you know, they they got to come over and, and see the house that we bought on Wednesday, which was not so much fun. Um, what happened? <sighs> Y'all heard me bitch about the 1031 process mm-hmm. uh, on an earlier episode. Um, the day before we're leaving, Spence goes to, uh, PT for his knee replacement and does something bad while he's there. And by the time he leaves there, goes to meet me downtown where we're picking up a U-Haul. By the time he gets to the U-Haul place, he can't even walk. Um, It turns out it was just like a uh, muscle spasm. Mm -hmm. I think when they they do the knee replacement, they like clip a ligament or a tendon or something to your quad. And it was just the first time in a long time that he had really used that muscle. But, you know, I was like, oh, my God, you fucked up your brand new knee. Like, you know, it was in my head. It was way worse than it actually was. Anyway, so I had two friends. He two of his friends come over and help me load this U-Haul Monday night. Um, And I check in with the 1031 exchange guy again just to say, like, all these obstacles that we had, are we in the clear? Like, can I just please you know, get on the road tomorrow with peace of mind. He goes, let me touch base with the closing attorney. I'll call you right back. It's like four o'clock the day before we're leaving. And he calls me back and he goes, um, they don't even have you on the schedule for tomorrow. I would not get in the car. And I was like, what? No. 
He goes, yeah, they, they said that they don't have this on the schedule until September 14th, which was our original closing day, but it got changed before we even ratified the contract. So I called up there and she was like, oh no, we've got you on for noon tomorrow. Um, you know, he probably called the other office. They have one in Cashers and one in Franklin. She was like, you're signing in the Franklin office. Don't worry about it. So that was, you know, another hiccup. And then as we're driving up there, um, one of my deals down here just, it, it wasn't falling apart, but the agent was so petty, so ridiculously petty. And I'm driving in the mountains, following a U-Haul. Um, it's raining, of course, trying to get to a walkthrough before we get to our closing. You know, of course, we're running late. Um, my phone calls keep dropping. Spence is getting frustrated with me because <laughs> of the U-Haul. It was just like, I was so aggravated. We are 30 minutes late for closing. The closing attorney wanted to talk about his knee replacement. Oh, God. <laughs> no. That's one thing I've learned with knee, this whole knee replacement is everyone loves to talk about their knee replacement and give <laughs> advice on w- at what point you feel like you've actually like overcome the mountain. Um, anyway, the, the other thing was that when we walked through the house, you know, I'd, when we were there looking at it, all of her furniture was there and she moved most of the stuff out. And uh, there are... Um, sunspots where all the rugs were mm-hmm. like vastly different colors they, of the floor they're pine floors yeah yeah so That's... now i got to do the floors which i wasn't planning on doing it's fine yeah but anytime you see a pine floor i i learned this young you lift up the rug and show your client mm-hmm. and just it's inherent and i don't even think there's anything you're gonna be able to do about it going forward but well and she also, most of the homes that sell up there sell either like mostly or partially furnished because like 70% of them are second homes. Mm-hmm. And um, she was selling hers partially, partially furnished and she left all the shitty stuff that no one wants. So now I'm left with like finding a company to will come pick it up and donate it, which is also frustrating. Mm-hmm. But she left all these nasty ass candles um, like cleaning supplies, nasty ass candles, shower mats, you know, we like had the same, we just had the same thing. gross we stuff. Had the, we had the same thing. Yeah. So I spent, you know, the most of the day running to the dump. Yeah. With I did trash love, bags full. I did love the dump experience though. Oh, you Since did? I, I'm a purger. Yeah. And we don't, I mean, I don't even think we have one here or no. do we? City picks it up. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, I just loved that I could like load my car up with trash and just go and then just throw it in the dumpster. It was so freeing. Yeah. But I didn't know I was going to have to do all that. Yeah, well, I did, but lo- luckily we're, we're close enough to it. It's, and it's the dump and the recycling all in one, so you just one stop. I will say that the brokerage I used up there has a concierge service, which was lovely because... Um, you know, Spence and I planned to unload this U-Haul all by ourselves, but since he hurt himself, I last minute called Judy and I was like, do you have anybody that can help me? And she was like, absolutely. Just tell me when you want him there. He showed up, he pretty much unloaded the U-Haul all by himself. And she, she gave me a lot of things for closing, but one of them was a hundred dollar gift card to their concierge service, which is they will come check on your house during the winter if you winterize it and you don't, you know, come up for three months at a time. He will come pressure wash your porch or scrape the moss out of your driveway or, you know, whatever. Um, but it's two men that are fully employed by the brokerage and just work for the broker's clients. How many agents are there in that office? I don't know. We should do that. I, it was it was really nice. Yeah, because um, we need it. yeah. I mean, I've done all kinds of crazy shit for my clients this summer. I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah. Last minute. <laughs> um, so. so Well, good. Well, it happened. Yeah. We're closed. And I, I met with the... Um, so did Spence then leave? We both spent the night there. Yeah. And then he left for Virginia Beach the next day. He was going to an And event. the girls came. And the girls were already there. They rented a house for the whole week. Oh. Um, so that's when the debauchery kicked in. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I, I met with a contractor while we were there. And I, I forget that it's all mountain time up there. So what I was thinking was, you know, you can renovate three bathrooms and sand the floors in yeah. a month. He's like, you might be in by Christmas. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Yeah. What? I know. It is a good reminder. And like 
for my mom and I, we closed on Friday and we had the property managers over on Saturday and um, told them that we were going to be ready to rent by Thursday of this week. (laughs) And I mean, they were like sweet. They just kind of ignored us. Um, And I was like, oh, yeah, 100 percent for sure. And like, there's just no way. No. So ours was um, the seller wanted to leave all of her stuff and we only wanted some of it. Well, she's free. So she wanted to leave everything and we said, fine. And I mean, we just got in over our heads and the, but the worst part was that she didn't clean it. So we had to take everything out of everything and clean it and then put it all back in. And then we still have to get it professionally cleaned. But I will say to agents, um, and I mean, we could see it at the walkthrough, but what are we going to be like? Oh, we're not buying it. Or like, if your seller does not want to have their home professionally cleaned, I don't care if it's in the contract or not. Okay, there's just common courtesy and and having the house cleaned is absolutely something you should do. So if my seller won't do it, then I'll have it done or I would give the buyer a gift certificate to have it done because it was just, you know, at the end, their behavior was so unfriendly for no reason. I mean, we gave them exactly what they wanted, but real estate's emotional and who knows. So we my mom is like a people person. So, like, anytime you go to the grocery store, she, like, you know, the person that's checking her out, she's like, hi, Sylvia, how are you today? So, she just, like, loves people genuinely, and she wanted this woman to show us around the property, and what do you do for the fish, and what do you do for the yard? And I hate asking this, because I know how weird that can be, but I was like, okay, my seller's a spiritual guru, my mom's a nice old lady, like, this can work, and I'm going to ask. So, I did, and she said yes and then at 7 30 in the morning the day of closing we show up to closing and meet our agent which is at 10 a.m and she said she's not going to meet us in the property and she's not going to give you the keys until the deed is recorded and my mom and I just gone to the grocery store and like loaded up with groceries checked out of our hotel I mean it was just all a surprise you were planning on staying there all weekend Yeah, and we were able to get in because they record the deed quickly. But, you know, people were closing. It was Labor Day weekend. And there was just no reason. I mean, there was no good reason for it. Like, we, again, just kind of gave her everything that she wanted. So I don't know what happened there. But, um, and I asked my agent, I said, is it it the agent? Is it the, like, because... You know, if my seller told me to do that, I would push back. I'm not, I, I have to do what my client want, wants ultimately, but I might say, you know, these people are here to move in and they're waiting. And, and the, the money is yeah, traded. Right. So, right. what do you care about the deed? Right. So, anyway, um, we did, we waited, everything was fine. We started moving stuff in and, um, anyway, made it through and then, that we made it through that day, and then at 2 o'clock in the morning, the next morning, I can hear my mom banging around in the kitchen. So my mom has always done business with Asia her whole professional life, so she has odd hours. And she's deaf, mostly. So, I mean, I feel like she couldn't even hear herself banging around. Yeah. Although, sometimes I think she was doing it on purpose. They were not soft-closed cabinets in the kitchen. So, like, 3 o'clock, I get up and I go in there. I'm like, hi! <laughs> oh, and also because she's also because she's deaf, when I walk into a room, I scare the shit out yeah, of her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. So, <laughs> so she's like... <gasps> and she's an anxious person because she just chugs coffee all day long. So anyway, so we started working at 3.30 in the morning, and we went until about 7.30 or 8 that night, just non Just cleaning. Just not, just cleaning, going to Target, going to the dump, doing, you know, and my mom is like a wordy salesperson, which is why I'm a direct, you know, so she's like, okay, she wants to sit down and have a meeting, and she's like, I was thinking, I'm like, no, 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 no. One, two, three. Like, so I I learned, I was reminded why I'm the way that I am, Mm -hmm. which is that I felt there was like a lot of um, distraction and nonsense. And I do talk about this and I send my team what I call the Sunday sermon. So I feel like they have a better understanding for my mom. But like my mom has no, it's, it's difficult for her to get things done sometimes because there's no real priority. So like 
when we needed to buy televisions to get the house set up for Airbnb. So we go to Best Buy. Well, she sees Marshalls and World Market, and she's like, oh, my God, toss pillows and throws. I'm like, no, no, like televisions, essential things, then we can fluff later. Um, I, the coolest thing was, in terms of getting things done, the outlets up by Asheville, the furniture outlets, there's a restoration hardware, crate and barrel, and... Um, w- Williams Gold, I forget, I forget. Which is Bob how far Williams. from you? It's, it's like 30 minutes from Hendersonville. Okay. And we got all of these restoration hardware cloud chairs at 90% off. You know, like the lady nice. that checked us out was congratulating me. The problem is you have to have a delivery service, come, like they don't deliver. So we called these guys, they picked it up the next day and delivered it to my mom on and moved all kinds of stuff around. So we like rearranged the whole house um, anyway, everything is, is done as it's going to be for now. And she's still up there dealing with stuff, but, um, you know, I mean, all of this is a challenge and I do think that it's good for us to have the experience of buyers, um, so yeah. that we can share with our clients, uh, how to be better sellers and then also relate to our buyers a little bit better. Yeah. Because it's just very stressful. Did you interview property management companies already? We knew who we were going to use because um, my boyfriend's sister uses this husband and wife and it's like they're calling. I don't know why anybody would want to be in property management, but we met this couple and I was so skeptical because in the first conversations, again, they were very like conversational and I'm, you know, when I'm doing business, I don't want to be conversational. Okay. So before they came over, I was like, Mom, this is a business meeting. I know you like Sue. I know you like Jim. But this is business. This is going to be short. We need to tell them what to do, blah, blah, blah. They were there for like three and a half hours. I just finally (laughs) gave up. I just like went outside when they were inside and inside when they were outside. and was like, okay. But they're legit as fuck. Good. They met. It's the second marriage. He was like a telephone guy in Colorado and saw this opportunity, saw this dream, and they can. They're like it, living their passion. Like I was, tech, you know, sorry to bother you on Labor Day on Monday, and they're like, "Oh, we're working." I'm like, "Yeah, you are." Yeah, you know. So um, anyway, they have just been a total godsend and and so gracious with my mom, who I feel like is, you know. I think she's demanding. There's, just, but but maybe she's not. But they think we're dream clients, and we think they're dream property managers. So I feel like that's going to go really well. Excellent. So that's that's a huge relief and a huge comfort. And shout out to my agent, agent Nancy Oberlies, I think is how you say it, with Beverly Hanks. If you need an agent in Hendersonville or Brevard, she's helped a bunch of my clients and friends up there, and I just love her. She just my personality style, fantastic. Um, but I mean, it was the strawberry, no, not the strawberry festival, the apple festival while we were up there. We didn't do anything. You yeah. know, we just worked, 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 worked. And it, so then I came back and I'm going to Italy tomorrow. Um, and so I had every intention of like starting to pack and everything, but, um, I just had fun the last two days. Yeah. So I'll pack tonight. Does your house come with a name? Because, you know, people like to name cabins in the mountains. So it was called Stonecrest or something like that because it's a stone house. Um, but we're calling it the Zen Den. The Zen Den. Because Makes it's sense. like a Japanese garden. It's all about the garden. And then there's like a little, my mom's calling it the tea house. There's a screened in porch back there where you can sit in a hammock and take a drug perhaps and perhaps see the leaves move. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just very, it's a very um, spiritual place. Great. Mine did not come with a name, but um, I workshopped it with my girlfriend group up there. Um, three of them are in marketing, and all of them are just very creative. Um, so we had a blast with that, and I will share some of the names if you like. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so when I first um, pitched this... Uh, we were um, shit-faced, and the first name that came out uh, is, was not even written down on the paper, but it seemed to have stuck. Uh, it's not going to be called this, let me just preface, but it was called this all weekend. The 
Woo-wee! Cabin. <laughs> Um, just because we were like 14 bottles of wine in one night. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> but I think the top three, so it, I, the, the property borders the Nantahala forest and the Cherokee translation for Nantahala is land of the noonday sun. So we thought about calling it noonday sun. Um, also, uh, the sunlight chalet. And then Levi Laurel, because it's covered in rhododendron. Mm. Spencer Shire was also on the list. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> That's definitely my favorite. <laughs> so anyway, but there's also like this separate carport where um, that's, and I say carport, it's actually very nice. It's detached. Um, and my husband's, it seems like all of his friends play some kind of like bluegrass, bluegrass instrument. And so we've decided that that's where the band will set up. And so that will be called the Snappin' Cabin because it's music that you snap to. <laughs> love it, love it. Wait, so did you pick a name? No. Um, these are on, Spence has to boat. Can I make a comment? Yeah, please. Anything with sun in it is not you. Why? The <laughs> hell, that, have <laughs> you seen <laughs> the windows <laughs> in the <laughs> house? No, 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 no. But you, you your personality, like I'm, it has to reflect you and your personality. Too. Remember when... um. So Remember rainy, you, grumpy cottage? Yes, rainy, grumpy cottage. Much, spicy, th- icy yes, spice? Yes, icy spice. <laughs> yes, see, that's what I'm saying. Remember when um, we had to pick a theme Maybe song I'm for the year? Maybe I'm a different person up there. When we had to pick a theme song for the year <laughs> and you <laughs> said that you wanted yours to be pocket full of sunshine. Because oh. do you remember? <laughs> no, I, I don't. I won't forget that because I thought that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that maybe I would be inspired? Yeah. Yeah. Grumpshire, <laughs> M- Moody Moody Woods. <laughs> yeah, you can workshop it. You can send me your ideas. I do like Spencer Shire. Yeah. Um. Anyway, well, that's fun. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, maybe I'll be in by Christmas. Jeez, unlikely. Um, and this is why we always tell our clients that if they want to do a renovation, they need to think twice and it's never, ever going to be what you expect. Um, so yeah, I mean, and that was a thing like we, between getting cleaning people, even somebody to clean up the yard, people to power wash and stuff like that. They were like, "Mm, we're booked weeks out. This brings me to another point. Um, seeing the house furnished and seeing the house mostly empty big difference yeah so if uh, to the i'm speaking to listing agents now and and sellers it, um when in doubt stage stage and use higher home yeah i totally totally you know the listing that i have now which looks really beautiful because of higher home um you know it was no question in my mind i was going to have it staged mm-hmm. i just think it's essential um yeah and it was you, just completely different energy and i didn't even love her furniture i mean i'm not saying it was yeah, beautiful it just didn't but feel it's warm. yeah you know it just it's just a big difference it's worth it okay so get your house clean before you close cuz it's nice um get your empty property staged any other tips Think of a cool name. What do you think of Zendan? Do you approve? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's very common. There's like a thousand Zendans, but so what? I'm not trying to reinvent I the wheel. always thought that one of the daycares that Levi goes to was called the Zenden. I've been calling it that for a year now, but I'm I'm not right about it. It's called Zen Dog. Oh. But I like Zenden. Oh, thanks. And I say one of the daycares because he goes to three. <laughs> there's an indoor one, there's an outdoor one, and there's one with a pool. So it's like weather dependent, you know, all that, but... How complicated. Zenden. I I like that. Good. Well, thank you so much for listening to our Mountain House closing stories. And I hope that you're flattered that I copied your Mountain House idea. And I yeah. also copied um, my boyfriend's sister's Mountain House idea. And so um, she should also be flattered. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe. Email any questions and positive feedback to (laughs) podcast at smithspencer.com. And we look forward to seeing you next time.